anthrax, black mold, Ebola, swine flu, avian flu, cholera, the plague. All these are pretty scary words in our vocabulary, and it's one thing when they're hitting people abroad. It's an entirely different thing when they hit us here at home. A perfect example of this is the Ebola outbreak from two summers ago. As you remember how that went down, there were thousands and thousands of people dying from Ebola in Africa. But things got really scary when passengers started showing up in airports that had been infected with Ebola. And so at that point, we knew that this thing could go global. And sure enough, it did. Not only was it at Gatwick in the UK, but it came right here to America, Cleveland, Ohio. There was a Frontier Airlines flight that passed through with an Ebola-infected patient on board, passenger on board. And if you remember what happened next, basically the country freaked out, right? We had people in front of the White House with signs. We had people petitioning Congress. We had Congress talking to other congressmen saying, stop the flights, close our borders, let's keep this stuff out of our country. Well, the fact of the matter is, we can't do that as an Air Force. We have a job to do. We can't stop flying, and we can't close our borders. Because we're the people that are going into these places to pick up these infected patients and bringing them back home to the US for treatment. And we're the people that are sending our medics into harm's way in order to help with treating people wherever they're infected in the world. And so, no, it's not an option. We got a job to do. So what do you do? What do you do when you have someone who has contaminated the inside of your aircraft? Maybe they got Ebola, maybe they're part of a, a team that's been deployed and they've been hit with anthrax and you've got to get them home again, and now you've got a contaminated aircraft. Or maybe you have an aircraft that's sitting somewhere on a forward operating base and it gets hit with an, an anthrax cloud. How do you make sure that you can bring that asset home and bring the people home safely? So the options uh, aren't, weren't numerous. One of the things you don't use is bleach. Bleach is a great disinfectant. It's great in your house. It's great in hospitals. But it's really a terrible thing for aircraft because it causes corrosion. It's an oxidant, and it just kicks off all kinds of corrosive reactions in your aircraft. So if you're going to go ahead and treat your aircraft to disinfect it with bleach, you might as well just leave that $87 million piece of equipment where it was contaminated because it's going to be a useless hunk of metal pretty soon anyway. So what are the other options? Well, in 2008, the state of the art was to um, do the following. It was to let the aircraft stand out in the sun and have the UV rays bake the microbiology off of the aircraft. And then you would take off and fly it around real fast and air wash it. So let the wind and the rain and whatever else blow the microbiology off the aircraft. And then you would land wherever you were going and wash it down with hot and soapy water. So really not the best state of affairs here, right? Doesn't, doesn't work all that great. For one thing, doesn't decontaminate the inside of your aircraft. For another thing, if you get down to the third step and you're washing your aircraft down with hot and soapy water, guess what? Aircraft leak when they're sitting on the, on the runway. And so now you've got hot and soapy water and anthrax leaking down into your aircraft and you've contaminated the inside of your aircraft. So really, we needed a, a different solution. So what are our options? Right? What kinds of technology is available to us? Well, it's, it's right in your kitchen, actually. So you may be thinking about Thanksgiving coming around, right around the corner. Uh, how do you ensure that the people that you're inviting to Thanksgiving dinner don't get contaminated by that turkey that you're cooking? Right? So how do you ensure that you're not going to give food poisoning to everybody? Well, basically, we all know you stick that turkey in the oven, you put that oven at a certain temperature, for a certain amount of time, and you're guaranteed to have decontaminated your turkey. Similarly, uh, maybe you've had a, a baby in your house and you've had a baby bottle sterilizer. So a baby bottle sterilizer is basically this plastic dome, and you stick the baby bottles in the dome, and then you put some water in there, and you put the lid back on top, and you stick it in your microwave, and you nuke it. And that steam, that humidity that's generated inside of that is really good at sterilizing those baby bottles. 
So you're getting the picture, right? Heat, humidity, kind of, you know, an autoclave kind of technology. Well, how do you do that for an aircraft, right? I mean, that's a pretty... Uh, hang on, excuse me, hang on a second. Wendy Goods and Soft Matter Materials. I'm kind of busy right now. Uh, can I get back to you? Okay, yeah, um, I'm sorry, what did you say your name was? Bill Greer of the Human Effectiveness Directorate. What can I do for you, Bill? <laughs> uh, yeah, my lab works on uh, microbial contamination of materials. We look at um, biofouling, biocorrosion, that kind of thing. Like, it's kind of like the biofilms that you got growing on your teeth, but it's infecting uh, aircraft materials, not your teeth. Yeah. I'm sorry, what did you say? You have a whole aircraft decontamination system? That's kind of crazy. How does that work? 170 degrees Fahrenheit, 90% relative humidity for 72 hours. Okay, that, that's, that's pretty crazy. What can I do for you? Oh, I see. So you're wondering whether or not the type of microbiology that my lab is interested in would be affected by the same process. I really have no idea what the answer is to that question, but I can look into it and get back to you. Okay, thanks. So that phone call changed my life. <laughs> changed the life of everybody in my lab. Uh, because what Bill Greer, who I'd never met before, was asking me was, he was telling me that they had built, RH had built this, this uh, aircraft decontamination system, and it was specifically designed for anthrax. And Bill Greer was about to demonstrate this technology down at Orlando International Airport. And he was thinking, we are about to cook an airplane. What else can we learn when we cook this airplane? What else might this technology be good for? And so he called me up out of the blue, and I didn't know the answer to that question. And I looked it up in the literature, and there was almost no literature available on it at all. Uh, and so I didn't really know what to do, but I thought about it a little bit, and I thought, you know what? One thing I did know was my lab had the ability to ask that question. It had the ability to go out into the field and assess the microbiology on an aircraft pre versus post decontamination. And that was something that we could bring to the table. So I called Bill back, and I said, I'm in. And uh, next thing we knew, our team was headed down to Orlando, and we were swabbing that aircraft tip to tail. So we were basically taking big, giant Q-tips, and we were um, wiping them over the surfaces, plating them on Petri plates, just like in Biology 101, also doing some fancy DNA techniques to find out what types of micro microbiology were there and how many were there. And we were doing this as the aircraft structure arose around us. So this structure was made of structural insulation panels, which are basically two pieces of aluminum with uh, styrofoam in between those pieces of aluminum. It's a highly modular system that can be built anywhere in the world. And if you just bring along your, your heaters, you can decontaminate any aircraft anywhere in the world with this system. So we, we went ahead and swabbed the whole aircraft and then uh, went out to dinner. And I remember being really, really nervous over that dinner um, because I really had no idea what we'd gotten ourselves into. I didn't know what was going to happen. I remember sitting across from a colleague and saying, this is either going to be the stupidest thing that I've ever done in my career, or it's going to be one of the coolest. And I wouldn't be standing up here in front of you today if it wasn't one of the coolest. So we found all kinds of microbiology on that aircraft pre-decon. We had human pathogens, and animal pathogens, and plant pathogens, and agents that cause corrosion. And after the decon, they were all gone. For all intents and purposes, that plane was sterile. And so think about the power of that, the power of asking that question for what else this decon system could do. Because not only did we know now that it worked for anthrax, but all these other things that could be on your aircraft. And that really mattered, because six months later, I got another call. And this time, it was the C-130 System Program Office. And they said, we have mold all over one of our aircraft. 
And we don't want to send our maintainers in there, and we don't want our crew on there, because it's everywhere. People have allergies. You know, nobody wants to be on the aircraft. What do we do? And I was able to say, we've got a solution for you. And sure enough, we took that same system, hooked it up to an aircraft from Peterson, and we cooked that aircraft too, and took care of their mold problem. And since then, some of this technology has also been transferred to the Navy. Who, uh, they have a lab over there that runs tests on some of the nastiest viruses in the world. And so pretty soon we'll know, too, how good this technology is good for those kinds of things, too. And the company that we worked with that built the original aircraft structure is dreaming a bigger dream, and that is of a facility where you can simultaneously treat an aircraft and treat people so that the next time this happens, the next time we have an aircraft flying around the world with contaminated people on board, we can land it, treat the people, treat the aircraft, and not have them interacting with the rest of, of the United States and avoid the freak-out mode that we had during the last Ebola outbreak. So I was tremendously honored, and it was very gratifying to be part of this team. It wasn't my idea, we just came along for the ride. And it made us all feel, myself and our team, like we were part of something bigger than ourselves. And um, one of the things that I wanted to pass along to all of you guys today, something really simple, and that is pick up the phone, AFRL. I mean, <laughs> Seriously, the talent in this room and um, you know, the innovation, the creativity, the subject matter expertise is amazing across AFRL. And you embrace the fact that you are part of something bigger than yourself and that you're part of this bigger mission. And it's a tremendously fun thing to be a part of. Every one of you may not feel like a hero, on any particular day. You may feel like you're slogging through petri plates or chemical reactions or spreadsheets or whatever it is, but I assure you, each and every one of you is a national asset. You're a part of the fabric of the Department of Defense, and you're part of what makes this country great. Thank you.